Okay, can I start AS27, sir? Okay, AS27 talks about financial reporting of interest in joint venture. Joint venture. So, what is this, sir? Sir, it's very simple. Sir, if X Limited has, let's say, more than 50% equity shares in Y Limited, then you apply accounting standard 21 because you have control. Okay. If X Limited, suppose, has significant influence. Can I write SI? Would you be okay with that? Yes. If YX Limited has significant influence in Y Limited, then you apply in or AS23, which talks about associate accounting. Okay. Sir, if X Limited, he exactly has 50% in Y Limited. Then we say we have JC. JC means joint control. In this scenario, you apply AOSHA 27. So that means if X limited has 50% in Y limited, there'll be another party. Let's say another party B limited. Let's say another party B limited. He also has 50% in Y limited. That means Y limited is basically jointly controlled by X and B limited. X limited and B limited. So in case of this joint control wala scenario, you apply accounting standard 27. Understood? Uh, yes, everybody. Sir, you will get significant influence when 20% or more. Sir, suppose you have only uh, I'll call this as A, B, this is C and let's say this D. Sir, uh, suppose X limited has only 18% in Y limited. Then it is what, sir? Then it is your normal investment. Normal investment is accounted as per AS13. That will add up to less than 20% AS30, 20% or more significant influence AS23, exactly 50% AS27, more than 50% AS21, that will break up. Okay, 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 G. All right. Now, can we get to this aspect, joint control? Ah, joint control means you tell me, sir, a company is controlled by one party or two or more parties, not necessarily two, it could be two or more parties. Two or more parties basically have a joint control. In my example, there were two parties, but there could be many also. It could be a joint venture of three parties also, four parties also, 10 parties also, whatever. Basically, for you to call it as joint venture, okay, there has to be a joint control. One single party should not have control. Control should be diversified. Okay, everybody should participate and then only decision should be made like that. Okay, so I don't see any practical questions from this because the practical questions in this chapter is very, very childish. Okay, it's lengthy. If you open it, looks like what is this and what? But it is very, very, according to me, probably it will not come. It may come also because one or two attempts, they keep it very, very first. Normally, when syllabus changes, generally new topics ka question, they keep it pretty straightforward from study material. So far, that's the history. History can repeat, history may not repeat also. Don't blame me. I am just giving you the what has happened previously. Usually, when syllabus changes, new, new things come in. For those new, new things, they don't bring in new questions. Whatever questions in there in our study material, that only will, will come in your examination. That is what has happened ideally. So in, in your attempt, one or two attempts, I'm expecting the same. And the questions of joint venture is very, very straightforward. Okay. I'll just quickly run through what it has done. In my opinion, mostly it will come as an MCQ question, theory question. I feel that has a better chance. Okay. So I'll tell you what, for example, what I feel is relevant from this topic. Sir, there are three forms of joint venture. There are three types of joint venture, jointly controlled operations, JCO, jointly controlled assets, JCA, jointly controlled entity, JCE. Three forms of joint venture, jointly controlled operations, jointly controlled assets, jointly controlled entities. Okay. So maybe they may ask you different difference between the same, some MCQ questions. You, you may have to identify whether it is a JCO or a JCA or a JCE. Those sort of questions I feel is has a more chance of coming from this topic than the numerical questions. So how do we identify? For that, you need to know simple features. So if it is jointly controlled operations, one of the features of JCO is no new entity will be formed. No new entity will be formed. Joint control means there is one party or two or more parties. Two or more parties have come together. They are doing some business, but they have not opened any new entity. Okay. Like let's say we have Arivo Pro Academy and we have one other, another one academy. We came together. We did not open a new academy, but we are doing some business. We are doing the work together. But did we open any new business, new company or we are continuing under our own name? We are doing our own name. Okay. Such things we call it as one, sir, jointly controlled operation. One of the feature of JCO is no separate entity is created. So whatever existing entity is there, that only is being utilized to do the new operations. Comfortable. Huh? Sir, operations means obviously you will buy some goods, you will sell some goods, you will end up making some profit. So this profit belongs to whom? So if 
our academy and some other academy does some work and if we generate profit that profit belongs only to our academy or both of us both of us that means we have to share to share in what ratio sir maybe equally or we will have an agreement saying we will share the profits in 60 40 ratio 30 70 ratio 45 55 ratio like this agreement will tell the ratio sharing proportion that is what they're saying over here venturers basically will settle the assets for joint venture business if you're doing any business means business will have some asset but does that is that business a separate legal entity or no legal entity no legal entity so any asset is there for that business means that asset belongs to whom now both the parties okay if that business has some liability means that uh, that liability belongs to or that liability has to be settled by all the joint parties that parties in joint venture we call it as joint venturers joint venturers so the joint venturers will have to settle the liability same thing if jv has an expense if that business has an expense that expense who has to settle or who has to incur joint venturers so if you generate any sales or income from that business what will you do with that sales and income it will be distributed among whom venturers in what ratio as per their agreement ratio maybe equal maybe different we don't know agreement will tell is that okay sir that is a feature of jointly controlled operations is that okay can i move on to the next one so next one is something called jointly controlled assets so two or more parties will come to form an asset let's say we want to build an underground storage facility we want to build a huge storage facility maybe we are in the whatever we want to store na some natural gas some petroleum liquid products we have to store so obviously when you're talking about petrol diesel and all no sir you're not talking about 100 square feet 200 square feet compromises petrol is a product which is used worldwide so that means if you are building a facility to store such product means the facility has to be really huge and you want to build that facility okay now to build such a huge facility do you think one party would be interested or they would like to share it with few people they would like to share it with few people that we call it as jointly controlled assets so you are building an underground storage facility okay that storage facility belongs to you now or let's say there are three parties who have come together and building a storage facility so that storage facility is an asset it is a property plant and equipment it belongs to one venture or also all of them oh. all of them so this venture no these sort of entity this sort of uh, joint venture is generally formed to construct an asset and that asset will be shared by whom now every party in the joint venture that's all so here also no separate entity will be formed existing name only business will be carried on no new entity will be formed whatever assets that you get no sir whatever asset you generate okay a part of that asset venture will show. Let's say we built a storage facility. In that storage facility, you know, sir, we say A, B, C. A has access to use 33% of that storage facility. B has access to use 33%. C has access to use 33%. Storage facility, we have built to store the products. No? So A told 33% of the facility I will use. B told same I will also use. C also told I will also use 33%. So in this case, there is one asset. What is that? Storage facility. That one asset is shared by all the three parties. So A will show his share of asset. What is A ka share? Let's say this is like a 90 crore is the value of that storage facility. Let's assume you built an asset whose value is 90 crores. A has how much share? One third. So one third of that is how much? 33% is nothing but one third. I mean, how much is this? Sir? 30 crore. So A, no sir, in his books, will show he will show that storage facility as a property, plan and equipment to the extent of how much? 30 crore. B will show his asset to the extent of 30 crore. C will show his PPE to the extent of 30 crore. Such an entity we call it as jointly controlled asset. So we are not doing an operation. We have come together to form an or to build an asset. That asset will be shared by whom now? All the parties. In what ratio? Agreement will say. Maybe equal, maybe in different ratio, whatever. So their respective share, that's what I've written here. Venturers will show only their share of assets and all in the financial statements. Obviously, to construct this asset, there will be some expense also. Who will bear this expense? jointly because if you are operating storage facility means that storage facility there will be rent also there will be electricity bill rent and all will be there no i mean who will bear that all the parties so all the parties will share expenses and if you have some incomes all the parties will share their income but basically this this arrangement is entered to generate or develop an asset okay you getting the difference between jco and jca no, okay two are over last is what sir jointly controlled entity name itself is saying jointly controlled entities so one of the features or highlight of jointly controlled entity is new entity will be formed. In the previous two version, new entity was not formed. Here, new entity will be formed. To do a business, you form a new entity. You don't do it, the business in the existing name, you do it under the new name. That itself is giveaway. Other two did not have it. This will have. 
So if they give this feature, obviously you'll select the right option. Is that okay? Now, sir, entity we already learned. Company is a separate legal entity. No? If you have a company, means company and shareholders are same or they're different? Different. Company ka assets belongs to company. Company ka liability belongs to company itself. Yes, but a company, however, if it makes any profit, that profit ka distribution will be given to whom? Shareholders. Yes or no? That is what we have to write over here. So since there is a new entity, what will that new entity do? They will only purchase their own assets. They That entity only will incur their own expense. They will only settle their own liabilities. But however, if the entity makes any profit or loss, that profit or loss will be given to as whom? Venturers in the form of dividend or whatever. Is that fine with you? That is what I've written here. Done, sir. Okay. For this, you know, sir. Uh, for this particular, if you have jointly controlled entity, you have to prepare something called consolidated financial statement because you have new entity here only. You know? In the previous two cases, man, there is no entity only. Sir, consolidated financial statement means clubbing two financial statement. For you to club, there has to be two companies. You no, know? in the previous cases and all, was there new company? No. So company came into picture here only. Correct. That means you will prepare consolidated financial statement here. So that means you have SFS also. We have CFS also, sir. Venturer has made an investment in venture, correct? What is the venture ka name here? Jointly controlled entity, correct? So obviously, if you want to float an entity, means that that's a new entity. How the new entity will get money? Now, let's say there is a JV Limited. Okay, this there's a new company. New company, how will they get the money? By issuing equity shares. So let's know. Sir, A Limited has 50% investment in JV Limited. B Limited has purchased 50% equity shares in JV Limited. So obviously, if A Limited is purchasing equity shares, means will they buy it at free of cost or they will pay some money? So A paid 10 lakh rupees to buy the shares. B also paid 10 lakh to buy this shares. Understood? I means totally how much money uh, JV Limited got? 20 lakh rupees. Correct? Now we are not talking from JV Limited perspective. We are talking from, let's say we are talking from A Limited perspective. Now A Limited made an investment in JV Limited. So for A, it is an investment. So in separate financial statement, how should you value the investment? It's an investment, no. Sir, apply AS 2123 only in consolidated financial statement. Are we talking about consolidated financial statement or separate financial statement? In separate financial statement, may you always have to apply AS 13. And what does AS 13 say? Value, if it is long term investment, valued at cost. Short term means cost or market price, whichever is lower. Sir, do you think all this will be short term or long term, sir? Usually, all this will be long term. So that means you will value this investment as per AS 13. Usually, this will be valued at cost. Understood? But however, in consolidated financial statement, may you need to value the things here. How do you do consolidated financial statement means you do something called proportionate consolidation method. You do something called proportionate, not equity method. You do something called proportionate consolidation method. Fancy name. Very, very simple. Name itself is saying proportionate consolidation. Sir, in subsidiary consolidation, what did you do? What did the holding company do? 100% of subsidiary assets and liability we added. Correct. Here, do we have hundred percent control or joint control? Joint control. That means only our share of assets, our share of liability, we will add in consolidated financial state. So, if we have fifty percent, means only fifty percent. Like here, no A Limited will not add hundred percent assets of JV Limited. They'll only add fifty percent of assets, and they'll add only add fifty percent of liability. Is that okay? Same. Fifty percent of income they will add. Fifty percent of expense they will add. So this assets and liability, if you add, you'll get consolidated balance sheet. Income and expense, if you add, you'll get consolidated p and account. Okay. So that method, we call it as proportionate consolidation. Meaning don't add 100% of assets and liability, add only your share. Your share could be 50, 40, whatever agreement will tell that. Is that okay with you, sir? That is your proportionate consolidation method. We have done some questions also in our regular class. Is that fine? This is very, very simple. They will give you balance sheet. PP value is 1 lakh. So if PP, let's say if this joint venture has a PP of 1 lakh, what will A Limited do? What will A Limited do in proportionate consolidation method? They will have entire share of this 1 lakh or only their share? Their share. What is their share? 50%. So 1 lakh of 50% is how much? 50,000. This 50,000 A Limited will show it as their PP. That's all. Along with their own property plan and equipment, even JV ka PP limited, PP they will add, but not to full extent, but only their share. So since we are considering only their share, we call that method as a proportionate consolidation method. That's all. Is that okay, sir? 
that's all. So know this this much. This is good enough from AS27. Okay, Sarji. Okay. Thank you.